so we will uh, continue for today lecture. Uh, we will start the first lecture because previously it's just briefing. So today I'm going to uh, continue on, I will start on the lecture for design project one. So uh, I will try to finish two chapters because it's just a uh, brief preliminary ones, but uh, it's not sempat, maybe one and a half lah, but should be okay. It's about the first two chapters are quite easy just that uh it's what you need to know before we begin the consultation uh next week so as i told you next week you should start your consultation uh, i've already given the grouping and everything to madam nuru akma so please make sure you arrange the time with her because i tak pasti what is her arrangement on the timing so please contact her for the timing so for my group the timing is already uh, as i already uh given in the schedule so uh, please follow the schedule, okay? So let me start your, share the screen first, okay? So today, uh, okay, so today lecture is uh, quite straightforward. We would like to first establish what we need to do once that we already given a project. So if you check your schedule, you already given uh, three important, information in your ask uh, uh, in your timetable which is one uh, the type of chemical second the production rate so MTA is metric ton annually and third one is a supervisor name so what's more important is please check and make sure your chemical and your production rate is correct okay so that's two, two things that you need to understand because the basis of uh, your plant design is based on these two information Okay, so first of all, we will start on the design problem. Okay, so now you imagine yourself that you are going to start building a chemical plant for the production rate that's already given to you and the type of chemical that has already been specified. So you must understand, of course, in the ideal world, uh, supposedly you choose the chemical that you want to produce, you choose your production rate. But in this class, assume that you already came to that conclusion, you want to produce, let's say, phenol, and you already decided on the production rate that is already given. Okay, so for the first uh, six weeks, as I told you last week, this is what we want to achieve in the first six weeks. Okay, so we want to understand the study of the raw material and the product. So the product is already given to you. So you now you have to do a background study of the product and background study of the raw material that you will use to produce the product. Okay, then next we will go to feasibility study. Okay, feasibility study of whether it's feasible to produce uh, the chemical that you were assigned. So for example, phenol, is it feasible or is it a good, you, uh, is it uh, doing a feasibility study on is it phenol is a good chemical to be produced, so on and so forth. And then we have a block, block and process flow diagram, which I told you last uh, Monday. We will start building the block and process flow diagram. Okay, and then plant location and lastly, safety issues and environmental impact. So this for today, we will go on uh, introduction. Okay, we're going to talk about how to establish the design problems, so on and so forth. And then we will go to uh, background study uh, on the process selection. Sorry, we just go on process selection first, right? So first. Uh, as you know, plant design is a creative activity and can be one of the most rewarding and satisfying activities undertaken. So when you do design project, you just assume yourself that you are actually building a real chemical plant and you are starting from scratch. Okay, so when you want to design, okay, always whenever that you do something, definitely you have a design objective. Okay, so in the design of a chemical process, you have to have consideration. So important considerations are the public need for the product, commercial opportunity as foreseen by the sales and marketing organization. So of course, when you want to produce something, imagine you want to produce and you want to sell something, definitely it has to be something that has a, a requirement from the public. It means the public, you have customers, existing customers, and this can be known by the sales and marketing organization. That's why, before we start actually uh, building a plan, we need to do what we call as feasibility study. And then design sh designers should obtain a complete statement of the requirement. So in your case, the complete statement of the requirement is already given to you because I already give you the type of chemical and you already given the targeted production rate. Okay, so you imagine 
before you start building a plan, okay, of course you need to first find out everything and then you will have the design objective and the design objective includes types of chemical and targeted production rate. So you can see from this diagram, there are few stages until you obtain the final design. So it includes uh, specifying your objective, then second, collection of data, physical property, design methods, Third, generation of possible design. So later when you check from literature, once you get your chemical, when you check from literature, you have a bit headache because different chemical plant might use different process entirely. So why different process is of course because of different method. And this different method is usually because of the different types of reaction. So you must remember to produce one chemical, there can be many, many types of reaction. So, so different reaction will have different method, different method, different process, different equipment, so on and so forth. So to establish the process that you want to choose can be also one of the headache. But I will teach you what do we need to consider. So after you already know all the possible design, let's say you find from literature, from your senior, so on and so forth. Now then we will then select and evaluate. So nanti dalam report kamu pun the same thing. You have to discuss the possible method. Okay, I try to help you because I know if I ask you to discuss so many all the methods, it will take a long time. So I just I just make it a requirement. You just discuss two different processes will be enough. You want to discuss more than two is much welcome. But what's required uh, from the report is only two different processes. So you have to discuss lah, process one, process two, okay, to produce the same chemical but different process. So you discuss the advantage, disadvantage, so on and so forth. And then finally, justify why you choose one of the process. Okay, so let me explain again. You only need to discuss two process, two different process. But if you want to discuss more, it's actually up to you. Okay, All right. So next one. Right, so once you didn't know the objective, so for your case, you don't know objective dia to hasilkan, let's say, phenol, let's say, 400,000 metric ton per annum. MTA to metric ton per annum, eh? Okay. Then next, you want to collect data. Okay, so now you at this stage. Stage pertama tu dah settle sebab saya dah bagi kamu. Stage kedua is you want to do data collection. Okay, so to proceed with a design, of course, you have to assemble all the relevant facts and data. So, I I, like I advise you previously, if you can get a sample reports from your senior, it's fine with me. Or if you want to find from internet, it's also fine with me. But always, always, ultimately choose the process where you have all information or the most complete information. So, this information, like I told you, if you can have a complete complete diagram which I will show you later much better. Kalau tak ada pun at least list of equipment, the process, so on and so forth. Okay, so this will include uh, possible processes, equipment performance, chemical and physical property data. Okay, this is, uh, of course, it's required. Tapi yang most important if you ask me is actually the complete processes. Means kalau at least dah tahu equipment, flow, and operating condition, which is temperature, pressure, okay, temperature, pressure, and composition, if you can, okay. So, uh, report one, tak apa lagi, this three thing, kalau tak ada, tak apa lagi. Tapi when you go to mass balance, energy balance, kalau tak ada temperature, pressure, dengan composition, uh, that will be the headache when you go to stage two. But don't worry, I will tell you uh, stage by stage what you need to have, what you don't have, okay, just that. The problem is uh, consultation, saya hanya jaga empat group and ada five group with Madam Nurul Akhmar. Tapi Madam Nurul Akhmar has supervised many groups before and I'm sure Madam Nurul Akhmar pun dah tahulah flow dia. Okay, so next one is uh, generation of possible design solution. Okay, so when you want to devise a process design, you have to actually sketch out the rough block diagram. Okay, later I will teach you. Bila kita nak start buat, nak pilih proses, patutnya kita kena first sketch the block diagram. Okay, kenapa nak sketch block diagram? Sebab block diagram tu can tell us how complex your plan will be. Okay, sebab one block one block is actually to represent one process or one equipment. Okay, so imagine kalau block diagram kamu ada 20-30 block, that indicates 
your main equipment will be 20 or 30 main equipment. And don't forget, you have auxiliary equipment lagi. Kamu ada pump, kamu ada heat exchanger, so on and so forth. So, for the block diagram, it gives you an idea how complex your plan will be. And then don't forget, in terms of money, the more complex your plan means what? The more expensive your plan going to be. So, then you have to consider, let's say if your chemical is a... Uh, It's a high specialty chemical ataupun chemical yang mahal. Perhaps the complex plan justifies the product. But if let's say your product is something common or it sell at a cheap price, so it doesn't justify lah like, plan yang sangat kompleks tapi harga produk, harga chemical tu pun sebenarnya sangat murah. So you have to actually consider this, the complexity versus the product, the product that you going to produce, which we were going to discuss further. Okay, then now. When you go and check uh, from literature, another headache will be the plant design that you refer might be different types. Okay, what do you mean by different type? It depends on whether it is modifying from an existing plant. It can be upscaling of an existing plant or you are developing an entirely new process. Okay, so for your case, it's actually a mix of new process than modification lah. Sebab I told you, right? I uh, ask you to refer from literature, refer from your senior. So it's sort like modification. Okay, and then at the same time, you have to produce, uh, you have to come up with yourself. So it's a mix of modification and new process. I would probably say more of modification. Meaning, katakan kamu dapat pada senior, you dapat pada literature, then perhaps we can think of how to modify the plan for it to be more efficient or to be more productive or in fact maybe to be even more cheaper you know maybe kalau plan tu complex perhaps you can modify it to make it less complicated so on and so forth so we will discuss further so again uh, everything that I told you is actually depends on macam nak cakap eh the chemical that you are assigned to I actually tried my very best to list out chemical yang commonly produced sebab kenapa kalau chemical tu commonly produced the literatures are more available kalau saya pilih chemical yang terlalu specific or chemical yang terlalu macam uh, only certain companies produce it my fear is you won't have enough information okay so i think the chemical that i give you are the easy ones the common one you should not be able, you should not have any problem to find the information right okay so next one Now you want to select, now that you have, katakan kamu dah check literature, you found that maybe five or ten different processes to produce one chemical. Sebab kamu kena ingat tau, uh, dalam plan ni dia punya, how do I say, uh, you know chemicals right, behavior, characteristic and so forth. So every plan will have its ways on how to uh, maximize, uh, of course always to maximize keuntungan, okay, to get more profit. So they might modify certain parts. So nanti bila kamu rujuk 10 literature, Dampak macam sama, tapi you will see sometimes the equipment sequence, so on and so forth, okay? So then again, what do what are the factors that we need to consider bila kita nak select design? Okay, let's say you have 20, 10 design, so on. How do we select? Okay, so normally we will go through a uh, few stages. Okay, so the first stages is what we call as possible design. Okay, or we call it as well as credible design. Okay, so what do you call by this credible designs? These designs are within the external constraint. Okay, constraint ni cabaran halangan, they are the external and internal. Okay, so external constraint is a much bigger barrier, okay, which include resources. Okay, so let's say for example, katakan kamu kamu tengok daripada literature, ada dua proses yang berlainan, let's say, okay. So, let's say you check the raw material. Okay, let's say proses yang kedua ni, raw material dia adalah something that is not available in Malaysia. That you need to export or you need to import the raw material from overseas. So, you may not to consider, kalau I use raw materials that I need to import from overseas, you know that will incur extra cost, right? Because it include transportation. So, perhaps method one menggunakan raw material that is easily available in Malaysia. So, then you will already save a cost, significant cost of transportation. However, dia bukan straightforward. Perhaps, maybe, uh, let's say yang method kedua tu, raw material dia kot oversee, but that raw material is at much cheaper price compared to method one yang raw material kat Malaysia. So, you can see dia susah tau sebab dia, there's a lot of criteria. You have to consider, okay, raw material ni kat oversee, 
mungkin mahal sebab transportation tapi when you see the raw material cost is much cheaper so you have to consider all these constraint all these factors when you want to decide the process so tu baru resourceful second physical laws standard and codes government control economic constraint safety regulation because you have to consider malaysia also we have our own regulation so certain chemicals are banned from entering malaysia or certain chemicals at a bit at a certain portion you have to uh, the process for you to import in will be uh, more difficult so malaysia pun ada rule perhaps i think certain raw materials that can be used to produce explosion dia tak straightforward nak masuk Malaysia you have to ask for record you have to ask for special permission from the Malaysian government if you want to import certain chemicals especially the one that involved in uh, making explosion so that is also factors that you have to consider okay so next one is uh, possible design okay possible design ni is what we call as feasible tadi credible boleh jadi feasible is more possible okay so we call it as possible design and What's the difference? Just now we think about external barrier, external uh, constraint. Now we will think about internal constraint pula. So internal constraint is such as process condition, material, personal time, methods, choice of process. Okay, so process condition pula. Let's say now you have two different methods. Uh, one method uses very high operating condition, meaning high temperature, high pressure. Method two, let's say no need. Okay, so when you have high operating condition, especially temperature and pressure, you know it will incur cost on your equipment design. Kenapa? Sebab sekarang equipment design kamu, material dia dah kena consider pula. High temperature, high pressure. Okay, you know that not not all materials can be used to construct an equipment when it involves uh, high temperature and high pressure. So that might incur cost on your plant. However, Maybe yang the one, the other method, walaupun kat room temperature, perhaps the process is more complex. Perhaps the process will need to use more equipment. More equipment is also money. Okay, so again, the consideration dia tak straightforward. Dia ada banyak-banyak faktor, a lot of factor that we need to consider when we want to build a plant. Okay, then last, next. After you have listed down everything, then only you go to probable design, which is the likely candidate. So maybe possible design dah 10, 10 methods. Let's say you find from internet, uh, from journals, 10 different processes. When you go to possible, maybe go down to 5, you already cut down 5, tinggal lagi 5. Uh, likely candidate, maybe tinggal 2, the last 2. And then best design is your ultimate design that you want to choose. Okay, so you might ask me then, doctor, which is right, which is wrong. Okay, if you ask me personally, you will never get one, I don't think it's possible to get one method that takes all the all the things that you want. Definitely, there's going to be always pro and cons in the methods that you choose. So in your report, for me, as long as you're able to justify okay, why you choose the method, depends on the reasons, it's already okay for me. Okay, saya takkan cakap salah atau betul, but you must be able to justify why you choose, let's say, process one over process two. Okay, so again, Dalam report, hanya present dua, only discuss two. But of course, during consultation, I will ask you guys, uh, for those under me, Menurut Amal, so the same, we will ask you what the possible methods, so on and so forth. And then you can discuss with me which method is okay, why you think you want to choose this, then it's already fine. Okay. So next one, so this is what I discussed, that what I explained just now. We have external constraint and internal constraint. Okay, so you have to discuss each of it, how does it influence your process selection okay now that now that you have already let's say uh, you get the literature from let's say from your seniors from your internet and so on now you have to understand what entails a chemical plant okay so kadang-kadang kita tengok chemical plant tu macam kompleks kan but actually there are few stages that is always going to be there or I call it as the fundamental stages or we call it as the anatomy of a chemical manufacturing process. Mean any chemical process pun, regardless method, regardless process, dia akan melalui this anatomy or these stages. Okay. So the first stage will be storage. Stage one, raw material storage. Okay. So you have to consider now, how are we going to store the raw material? Okay. So depend on the nature of raw material, method of delivery, 
assurance on the continuity of supply. Okay, meaning what? Okay, when you want to have a storage, you have to consider the source of your raw material. Let's say if your source is from, uh, you choose, let's say you choose your supplier dekat je dengan kilang kamu. So if your supplier is near to you, you don't necessarily need a big storage sebab kamu tahu katakan saya nak order, I can get it within few days. So it's not necessary to build a big storage, a small one will do. But however, let's say if your material is from overseas, which you know will take, let's say, by shipping or by air. By air, okay lah. By shipping, you know it will take quite some time. So you have to consider if, let's say, every shipping will take me three months, meaning my storage must have at least three months in everyone's raw material before I can wait for the next storage. And of course, tak boleh tunggu tiga bulan. You must have extra emergency provision as well if, let's say, the shipping takes time. So that is also a consideration when, to, when you want to factor in on the storage. And then you have to remember, the, remember I told you in reaction, uh, your chemicals can come in different phase, right? Gas phase, liquid phase, uh, solid. So kalau solid, macam mana? Kalau liquid, macam mana? Kalau gas, macam mana? And then you must remember, uh, each of the chemicals have its own uh, safety uh, precaution, right? Safety issues, so on and so forth. So tak boleh straightforward simpan bersama-sama. So you have to consider that factor as well. So that's why later, when we discuss plant location, we also consider that part. Should I build my plant nearby to my supplier? Tapi kadang-kadang, I would perhaps build it near to my customer. Sebab kalau dekat dengan customer pun bagus juga, senang nak hantar. So that's also factors that you need to consider. Okay, so next stage, feed preparation. Okay, must remember when you purchase from your supplier, it's very rarely you get your raw material tu dah ready untuk digunakan for your process. Okay, very rarely. If you can get, much better. But most of the time, you will not get the standard or the purity that we want from the supplier. So in that case, what we need to do? So in our plan, we need to have the purification and preparation of raw material. Okay, so let's say in your case, your raw material, let's say you use, uh, let's say you use, uh, can, I, can I give idea? Let's say you use phenol, okay? But let's say your raw material is phenol, you purchase from supplier, is 95% purity. But your process needs 100% purity. So in your process too, in your plant, the first equipment, the first process will be on the preparation of the feed, which may include purification. Okay, so that's one factor to be considered. So, when you want to design your process, kamu dah kena fikir, ada tak supplier yang boleh supply to the standard that you want? If cannot, then you have to consider that in your plan. Then, next one, reaction. So, this is what something, that's why you have a one course on its own called reaction engineering because in every chemical plant, I will not say every, in most of the chemical plant, you will definitely have a reactor or reaction, a reactor where reaction takes place. So, you can see here, they put it, reaction stage is the heart of chemical manufacturing process. So, in fact, when they're talking about designing a chemical plant, designing banyak-banyak equipment, the first equipment that priority will be taken is on the reactor. Kenapa kami ingat tak? Sebab reactor kan conversion, uh, product yang kamu nak. So if my reactor is not working at the optimized condition, uh, tak gunalah equipment yang lain. Must be the most efficient reactor for the success of a chemical manufacturing. Okay, then. Now, lepas reaction, kan remember when you have reaction, you have main product, side product kan, and we have unconverted reactant. Very rarely reactor boleh convert 100%. Mesti ada yang tak convert, ada main product, ada side product. So, kena buat apa? Kamu kena separate. Why kena separate? Don't forget product by product and your unreacted to have to be separated. Why? Sebab your unreacted material is money. You cannot just buang je. You want to recycle back and use back. So always when after reactor, if I don't, we don't get high conversion or we don't get optimum condition conversion, we will have to separate and recover back our reactant to be recycled back. Okay, so in your plan later, sebab tu macam mass balance pengiraan dia jadi kelang kabut sebab dah lah kira daripada belakang ke depan. Lepas tu kena kira recycle pula. Kamu kena decide berapa yang nak di recycle into the process. So on and so forth. Okay, and then after you are separate, let's say you are separated, you dah recycle your uh, uh, reactor. Now you have your product and side product, kan? So product and side product, kena purify pula because it depends on you. What is the purif what is the purity of the product that you want to sell? Okay, so 
First, kena tahu purity raw material yang nak guna. Next is to decide the purity of the product that you want to produce. So, this is up to you. So, let's say if you want 100% purity, means your uh, purification punya stage tu akan jadi lebih kompleks lah sebab kamu nak dapat sampai 100%, which is usually impossible lah. Usually, the most also 99.9. I don't think you can reach to 100% because engineering, I don't think it's perfect. So, you don't think can reach 100% purity, the most maybe 99. I think if you check chemical punya internet, they will give you about 99.5% purity. So, it depends on you. Purity nak decide macam mana? Kalau, kalau saya jadi kamu, tengok Google je. Normally, kalau company, chemical companies, kalau chemical ni, dia jual purity apa. So, you know, if they are selling at this purity, most likely, this is what the customer want. So, kamu ikut je. Kalau company A, B, C kata jual at 80% purity, you set at 80% purity. Unless, unless, you identify ada customer, potential customer yang memang nak, let's say at 98% purity, you you identify potential customer. Perhaps that can be a that can be a good reason sebab higher purity, the more expensive it will be. Which is normal sebab nak purify kan kena banyak, kena additional process. So, more purity, more money. More money, more equipment, so on and so forth. And then lastly, is your product storage. Okay, so your product storage must also be there. And then it depends, your customer. I told you the same consideration as tadi raw material, supplier, product, customer. So, kamu kena, uh, you have to balance between the ability of getting the raw material and how uh, the, the easiness for you to sell your product to the customer. Okay, so let's say that's why when, when you're doing the plant location later, you have to consider all this. So, means, kamu dah kena tahu sebenarnya siapa potential supplier, potential customer. This will be a reason in doing your uh, plant location later uh, as well. Okay, alright. So, then don't forget. Okay, this is the main one. Okay, but we always we often forget ancillary processes or, or we call it as additional processes. Why? Because all this equipment, all this process will need utilities. Okay, equipment yang kamu gunakan ni semua ni memerlukan utilities yang kamu tak nampak dalam block diagram tapi nanti bila kamu buat PFD, kamu akan perasan there's a lot of utilities that you need. So, this utility include process water, cooling water, compress air or steam. Okay, so untuk for this equipment to function, they need utilities. Okay, and then don't forget, your plant will also have other facilities such as uh, maintenance, okay, you have to have a special place for maintenance for your plant. Second, firefighting, if your plant is big enough, you might need your own firefighting station, okay. You need officers, administration, your administration uh, staff will be need to be placed in their office. And of course, if you are doing R&D, you need laboratory as well. So later, I will teach you to do plant layout. Kamu ada dua, kamu ada plan layout je eh. Kamu ada plan layout dengan location layout. Okay, so plan layout ni dalam kamu punya plan. The whole factory layout ni kamu kena buat layout. Okay, where will be your plan? Where will be your offices, your parking lot, your uh, 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 hostel, uh, not sorry, hostel, cafeteria, so on and so forth. So later kamu akan design betul-betul kamu punya plan which include as well the entire layout of the plan and the factory as well. Okay, right. Then, next one is deciding against continuous versus batch. Okay, so in your case, fortunately, based on the production rate, definitely you will go towards uh, your towards continuous dah. Sebab daripada production rate kamu memang impossible to do batch. Okay, so in your case, technically you dah, of course you go to continuous. But let me discuss with you in general. Okay, let's say now kamu ada chemical ni, kamu nak decide nak pergi continuous ke nak pergi batch. Okay, so there are actually many criteria to be considered. Okay, first, if you are doing continuous, if your production rate is greater than 5 million kilogram per hour, okay, means a big production rate, uh, single product, okay, you've got no, uh, you only just produce one main product, uh, no severe falling, good catalyst life. So if you're using catalyst, usually we will use a continuous process, uh, proven processes design established market. Okay, batch process, I think I've taught you before in uh, reaction, batch ni normally at a smaller production rate 
And normally for new processes, means katakan chemical yang kamu nak hasilkan tu, tak ada orang yang pernah buat. You are the first to produce the chemical in mass. Okay, so usually when you, you just want to start producing it in a mass scale, we will always start with batch first and then we will modify and upgrade to continuous later. Okay, so because when you have batch, when you have new process, there are many things that we have not established yet. Remember, I told you, kita kena establish kinetics data, kita kena establish catalyst, kita kena establish this, so on and so forth. So, new processes, usually batch, but for your process that are given to you and the production rate, automatically it goes to continuous. Okay, so next one. This is entails the entire design one and design two. Okay, so and this also entails the actual process design. So, sebenarnya what we teach you in the class, we would like to mimic closely to the real plant design. Okay, so in the phase one, need the diagram shown here is the correct is the standard process for a plant design. Okay, so in phase one, which we're gonna do for this semester. First is initial selection of the process to be used. Uh, I honestly advise you by week 2 or week 3 dah kena ada process dah. Week 3 paling last lah kamu dah kena ada process. Kalau week 3 tak boleh decide nanti week 4, week 5, week 6 or week 7 dah presentation. So by week 3 everybody must already agree on the process. Okay then process flow sheet. So you will have to do block diagram and process flow diagram. Okay, specification of the process, meaning what are the equipments that will be used in your process. But don't worry, as I told you, benda ni akan change many times. Tika project pertama, in uh, report one, benda, uh, this, this so and so, report two, tukar lagi, masuk design project two, tukar lagi, which is very normal. Okay, so that is something that is, uh, uh, you know, is designed. Definitely the ideas will keep on changing, right? Then next, uh, design of equipment. So design equipment will push to uh, design two, but design one, not but mass balance, energy balance pun, it will take long time, okay? So then phase two, you will do the detailed mechanical design of the equipment. So design two later, kamu akan betul-betul design reactor to, uh, sorry, design the equipment, Okay, using software, you will design, you will, you will determine the size, the specification, so on and so forth. The structural, civil and electrical design, they bukan just equipment design, eh? it includes structural, civil and electrical design of your equipment, specification and ancillary services as well. So that is in design 2. Okay, design 1, sampai mass balance, energy balance only. Okay, next one. Now, don't forget, okay, as an engineering or as an engineer text, uh, and technologies, uh, all of you are bounded by code and standard. Okay, when we talk about uh, a graduate of engineering and engineering technology, everything that you do is bounded by what we call as engineering code and standard. Okay, or we call it as engineering practice code and standard. So when you are designing, you are doing your report and so on, make sure you always refer to this practice code and standard, which in design, it includes material properties composition, testing procedure, preferred size, design method, inspection, fabrication, code of practice for plant operation and safety. So, I hope you already learned in safety, you already learned in other uh, courses as well. You know that when you are designing, for example, equipment, okay? For example, you want to design, let's say, heat exchanger, uh, sorry, reactor lah. So, suka reactor, sebab reactor yang paling saya tahu, okay? What is that reactor? Let's say your reactor is at a very high temperature, high pressure. So at certain temperature, certain pressure, there's already a standard, standard code that states, okay, if this pressure, this temperature, only certain material that can be used to construct the reactor. Okay, so you cannot simply kata, tapi lah saya nak murah, saya, saya guna carbon steel. Cannot. Carbon steel is only for temperature, I think, less than 200 and less than 10 megapascal. Anything more than 200 and 10 megapascal, you are supposed to go to stainless steel. But stainless steel pun ada code dia sendiri. We have SS304, SS315, SS316, so on and so forth. So certain material has its own specification in terms of operating condition. So you must obey to this code and standard when you are building your plant. Okay, so kamu nak pilih, kamu tak boleh sebarangan pilih ikut suka hati kamu. You really need to refer to this code and standard which we will then uh, teach you, guide you as it goes around. Okay, so code, 
referring to recommended design, operating procedures, standard papers to the sizes and composition. Okay, so when you are designing certain equipment, there are certain size, kamu pun tak ada sebarangan, katakan piping kamu tu, you cannot simply uh, determine your piping size. The piping size also other standard dia sendiri. Okay, so the piping size includes the thickness of the wall, so on and so forth. Material construction, thickness of the wall. This also has certain codes and standards you need to follow when you're designing it. Okay, so that's why uh, I highly advise you to uh, use the design book when you're doing the design because then they will tell you what are the codes and practice. So each equipment, each component, each parts may have its own codes and standards. That's why kalau kamu nak pilih process, if you are choosing a high temperature, high pressure process, this is extremely important in the design. Okay, right. So units. Okay, so this is what something that I have to tell you by now. Please make sure the units are standardized. Okay, and in design project one, uh, please use SI unit. Okay, so I, tak nak ber, so I don't want everybody reporting different, different unit. It will be very confusing. So my request, everything reported in your project must be using SI unit. And of course, in the real world as well, when you're doing a design, everybody must speak the same language using the same unit. So either it's SI unit, American engineering units, and so on and so forth. It must be of the same unit. And in my design project one, I decided please use SI unit. So make sure all of you are synchronized on the units. Okay. So next one. Okay. Right. So in a chemical process, the transformation of raw material into desired product cannot be achieved in a single step. The overall transformation broken down into several steps that provide immediate transportation. So, understood lah daripada raw material, to get a product is not one process or one block. It will be broken down into several blocks, which just now I did tell you, right? Kita ada uh, uh, raw material purification, kita ada reactor, kita ada separation, purification of product, so on and so forth. So it involves a lot of process until you achieve your final product. Okay, so these are among the things that you will consider, which we will discuss more. But at the very beginning, these are the factors that you have to think. What types of processing? Okay, how do we sequence the processing step? Okay, next, uh, to what extent can we expect each of the processing step to perform? What features are required? So, for example, let's say now, reactor, okay? Saya so, so, reactor. Let's say now you have one reactor. Let's say your reactor now conversion is very low. Let's say you have only 50% uh, conversion. So, tadi saya katakan kamu, satu option, separate, recycle balik kan? Okay, that's one option. Another option, remember I told you, it's possible to have reactor in series, kan? So, means, katakan satu reactor conversion 50%. Perhaps, instead of separating and recycle, I add another reactor. So, when I add another reactor, perhaps the conversion can increase from 50% to, let's say, 90%. So, when I increase conversion, okay, that will be also another alternative. Rather than separate, recycle, separate, recycle, just continue to another reactor. I have higher conversion, more product. I will still need to recycle, but yang recycle tu dah tak banyak sebab dah banyak di uh, convert. So that's uh, that's one thing that you may consider in your uh, uh, in your plan when you want to modify ke or something. There's another factor that you can consider in your plan design. Okay. So next, how much energy is required? How much is produced? So you know dalam energy balance, right? You know energy balance. Uh, some equipment is uh, needs heat to be supplied. Certain equipment will release heat. So that's also a factor to be considered. Okay. Then we have how much feed do we need? How much product are produced? In your case, I, we, you already know how much you're going to produce. You don't know how much that you're going to need. Okay. So that's what you're going to do and mass balance. Kita akan kira berapa sebenarnya raw material that we need. Okay. How much waste is generated? So then again, saya pun nak cakap, when you consider process, you also have to consider maybe certain process produce a lot of byproduct. So when you produce a lot of byproduct, means what? A lot of waste. So let's say you are you choosing a process with a lot of waste, you may that then it's going to be another headache for you. How to manage and treat the waste? Okay. If the waste is not hazardous, 
or it's quite straightforward, perhaps you can have your own waste treatment plant. Let's see. But let's say you're producing a very hazardous chemicals or your plant is not able to treat it, you might then need to think how to uh, outsource it and send it to the waste treatment companies to, sort, to treat it. Because then if I send it outside to be treated by other companies, that is also money. Okay, so jangan tak, tak boleh fikir juga pasal produk je. Kena fikir juga macam mana nak manage waste ni. Okay, I cannot be piling it in my plant, right? You need to somehow either treat it or send it outside. Okay, so that's also a factor to consider when you are choosing the process. And lastly, profit. So, profit nanti dalam uh, plant design project 2, you will calculate conclusively how much is the cost of your plant. Okay, you will determine how much the cost of your material, how much the cost of your plant, and then you will calculate in how many years finally your plant will make money. So usually the new chemical plant, the first five years, the first five to ten years, rarely they make money. Somebody nak recover balik duit untuk bina plant kan? Kat bina plant nak kena beli equipment semua, design equipment, that is money, right? So, for you to recoup back your investment, it takes usually about 5 to 10 years before your plant start making profit. So that will be uh, what you were going to do in plant uh, design project 2. Okay. So next one, once you have already established the process concept, then we can have process flow sheet. And once you have process flow sheet, then you will have equipment design. So that's our process flow sheet. Dah tahu katakan, okay, saya ada satu react, saya nak, must have one reactor. For example, I might have one uh, separation. Then you have to decide, reactor tu, reactor apa? Remember, I taught you, you got different types of reactor, right? Uh, on separation pun, you got different types of separation, right? You might use the station column, separator, so on and so forth. So, that is also something that you need to consider. Dah tahu proses, dah kena pilih pula. Equipment mana yang kita guna for that process itself. Okay, right. So that's for uh, chapter one. Since we have time, I will go to chapter two. 